Good evening and welcome to Summit Sessions Live. I'm your host, Brody Britton, and we are here inside Moore Hall Studios at Central Michigan University. This is a student-produced program that's coming to you live on MHTV, YouTube Live, and 91.5 The Mountain. Our audio mix tonight is brought to you by the talented folks at Moore Media Records. Tonight, we're going to be hearing from indie rock duo Just OK. We'll also have time to answer any questions you have for them. So we want to make sure we're asking the questions you want to hear. Tweet us any questions or comments you have for Just OK at Summit underscore Sessions. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, leave us your thoughts in the comment section below. We'll select a couple questions to ask our guests later in the show. We are kicking off tonight with Just OK. The Romulus Michigan duo features Nina on good vocals, writing, guitar, piano, drums, uke, and production as well as Johnny Lovell on vocals, writing guitar, piano, bass, and production. Here's Just OK Now with their song Monday here on Summit Sessions Live.
That was Just Okay with their song Tuesday here on Summit Sessions Live. We're going to take a short break, so while we're away, don't forget to send us your questions and comments for Just Okay on Twitter at Summit underscore Sessions or leave a comment below on the YouTube live stream. Stay right there because we're going to chat with Just Okay when we return. But first, here's Rebecca Cripley with Music in the Mitten. We'll be right back. Welcome to Music in the Mitten and More, a segment of Summit Sessions Live devoted entirely to music in Michigan and then some. I'm your host, Rebecca Cripley, bringing you the latest news for Michigan music, virtual concerts, and more. Coming up, Central Michigan University's UTDC University Theater Dance Company is live streaming a concert of solos on April 24th and April 25th. Enjoy a selection of solo dance performances in a variety of genres featuring choreography by CMU dance faculty, students, and alumni. Tickets are $5 a piece and group rates are $10. Soarin' Eagle Casino released live concert dates with Luke Bryan on May 29th. The summer lineup includes Megadeth, Lamb of God, Miranda Lambert with Bryce Lee, Shinedown, and Keith Urban. The 313 Presents announced live concerts for this summer at Little Caesars Arena, Fox Theater, DTE Energy Music Theater, the Michigan Lottery Amphitheater, Meadowbrook Amphitheater, and Comerica Park. For more info on concert date and artists, check out 313presents.com. New music from Michigan band Greta Van Fleet. The album Battle at Gardens Gate was released on April 18th with hit songs Heat Above and Age of Machine. According to the Detroit Free Press, the album was produced by Greg Kirsten, who's best known for his work with Adele, Paul McCartney, and Foo Fighters. The Oscars are this Sunday, April 25th. Nominees for original song are Fight For You from Judas and the Black Messiah, Hear My Voice from The Trial of Chicago 7, Husavik from Eurovision Song Contest, The Story of Fire Saga, EOC from The Life Ahead, and Speak Now from One Night in Miami. Nominees for original score include De Five Blood, Mank, Minari, News of the World, and Soul, Reznor, and Ross are up for two nominations in the same category. Mank is a Netflix international picture starring Gary Oldman and Amanda Seyfried. The film overviews screenwriter George Mankiewicz and the lead up to his screenplay for the 1941 classic Citizen Kane. The score is reminiscent of early 1920 and 30s jazz with dramatic elements found in film noir. Their other project, Disney Pixar Soul, could not be more different in terms of sound. Soul, starring Jamie Foxx, voices music teacher Joe Gardner. Joe, conflicted between continuing teaching full-time or living his lifelong dream of being a jazz musician after landing a gig at a music club, falls in a manhole. He wakes up as a soul in the great beyond. The film has modern electric sound with hints of jazz every now and then. The score is upbeat and melancholy and uses a choir throughout some of the tracks. That's it for this episode's installment of Music in the Mitten and more. Come back next season for more Michigan music news. But until then, let's get back to the music here on Summit Sessions Live. We'll be right back. The black truck? Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no.
Welcome back to Summit Sessions Live. I'm your host, Brody Britton, and we're simulcasting live on MHTV 91.5 Down and YouTube Live from right here in the School of Broadcast and Cinematic Arts at Central Michigan University. We are here with Just OK. How are you guys doing tonight? Hey. Hey, we're doing good. How are you? Good, good. Those were some, those were some fantastic uh, music videos. Could you guys give us the behind the scenes scoop of how you guys like came up with the idea and like the filming of them? Yeah, for, uh, for Monday, it was a bit of a DIY project. We got the green screen and the clips and we literally hung it up in my dorm. From the ceiling. Yeah, and we filmed a video in the dorm room and then she did all the editing. And the artwork and stuff and then gradually we found a uh, a lot of friends that are better at like the photography and videography and art stuff that can help us out so we don't have to do all of that on our own yeah so and then we were just trying to catch the vibe of that song and then basically the same thing for the thursday video we were just vibing in the forest or in the nature park mm -hmm. in the forest in the nature park and trying to catch the vibe for the song and then uh the tuesday that was just a little sneak peek to some unreleased stuff. Well, that's awesome. Um, I, I love the videos. Um, and speaking of the okay. songs, um, based on just the songs you performed tonight and the singles you released, um, all of the songs seem to be named after a day of the week. Why is that? Um, because the, uh, the album is called Colorful Days. Uh, after we're done with these single releases, we're going to end up dropping a whole album called Colorful Days, and it'll be every day of the week and it'll probably make more sense once all of the songs are actually out because the narrative kind of follows a more cohesive story when you can when you have all the pieces yeah. so right now we're just kind of putting this stuff out individually as singles and feeling the the vibe. vibe that comes back to us from that and um yeah um so both both singles you've released for your uh, forthcoming album, Colorful Four Days, as you guys just mentioned, were released earlier this year. So what was it like recording an album during the midst of the pandemic? It was nice. It was nicer recording during the pandemic because we, we started recording um, right, at the, at the right at the beginning, yeah. like when uh, we were high school seniors, so yeah. we didn't go to school anymore. <laughs> so we were just stuck home all the time. And that's kind of how we occupied our days was just writing and producing stuff and learning new instruments and yeah so it's probably been better for us because we've gotten a lot out of it but uh yeah it's probably been better for us to record not that, that COVID is good yeah, COVID not sucks. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um since you guys uh did record it during the pandemic and um you know you guys are like self self like produced and self-releasing um where did you guys uh record it um, mostly in the dorm room, my dorm room in Herrick. My bedroom back at home. In the basement in Herrick. If you go in the basement in Herrick, we recorded it right next to the fridge. I recorded some stuff in the bathroom because the acoustics are <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the places I so far. I think that's all the places. That's really cool. You guys are like getting really creative with uh, where you're recording. That's awesome. Um, Thanks. Thank you. From what I saw on your guys' uh, YouTube channel, you guys used to upload some covers. What made you guys like kind of graduate from recording covers to like writing and producing your own music? Well, we've done covers since we were like little. Like we were like, like eighth in grade. seventh grade, I think yeah. we put out our first cover together on my old channel. Yeah, and, and we've just been doing that, and then both of us write on the side a lot. And so, you know, it was bound to happen someday that since we always do music together, that we would just gradually become a band and write songs We're together. Basically, like the inverse gender version of each other. So, like, <laughs> we, the way that we've been writing, like, yeah, we've been writing since we were like probably the same age yeah. as when we started, and we write the same way, and yeah. we kind of have the same level of expertise on different instruments. Yeah. So, it's like double the awesome. I would I would agree that's that's awesome. All right, let's take Thank a look you. at what you guys at home had to say had to ask just okay. Um, so have you guys played in front of an audience before? And if so, what is the best audience you've ever played for? Um, we played for a couple of audiences. Yeah, we played for a couple of audiences. I think the best audience for me was probably we played 
at a McDonald's once. We played yeah. a show at a McDonald's, and that was the best audience for me. Yeah, that was pretty fun. For a, it was like a little poetry slam. Kids type off thing. the streets and writing and doing creative things instead type of yeah. benefit, and, and that was nice. Yeah. yeah. My favorite was my grandma. Every time we come over, she asks what new stuff we've been working on. So I really <laughs> like performing stuff for her. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, let's take another social media question. What instrument do you think you could use as an eating utensil? Any of them, if you're if you're ballsy enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say probably the most conventional would be drumsticks. Yeah, because you could just use them like chopsticks, like kind of. Yeah. If you have like crazy really phalange fingers, power. Fingers, yeah. yeah. Drumsticks. Yeah. drumsticks. Um, have you guys ever tried to eat off an instrument? I would never. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get uh, we'll get a little bit more uh, serious, but uh, uh, what do you guys uh, got for the future of the band? Um, we've got some videos planned, and some songs planned, and some albums planned. We have planned out, honestly, we've planned out like four or five years in advance of yeah. just albums we want to put out and people we want to work with in the future. We have uh, quite a few people like in the mix right now that we have like just in contact or we're talking to regularly that we're who, looking forward to working with. Who are you going to work with? Uh, uh, we have our buddy Mitchell from Crane 2. You yeah. can find them on Spotify. Spotify. Helicopter. Helicopter. Angelic. Yeah, Angelic is also on Spotify. Uh, Prod UV. Kim. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to those con collaborations, definitely. Unfortunately, that is a wrap of tonight's episode of Summit Sessions Live. Thank you once again to you guys, Just Okay, to, for joining us. Be sure to check out their music after the show. And don't forget to keep up with us at Summit Sessions Live on Twitter. And thank you for everyone who has made this season possible and everyone who is going to leave. Uh, I will miss you greatly. We will all miss you greatly. I have been your host, Brody Britton, and have a fantastic evening and see you all next season. Um, that was, you guys feel good? That was a good show. I, uh, you guys did.